Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Sometimes you have plugins installed for years. They lay around, you never use them that much, or maybe um, you use them only for one feature. And uh, at some point you find out they have actually more features and these features are kind of helpful or interesting. And yeah, this happened to me today here with this plugin called Unfilter. And Unfilter is very expensive. I got this on a sale for half the price, but at the moment I think it's around 300 bucks. So it's very expensive. I know that, right? It's not like you have to buy it right now. So maybe put it on a list if you want to have it. Um, but Unfilter, maybe you already have it. Uh, I don't know. So Unfilter here um, is a plugin that tries to find out what was done to a signal, right? in terms of filtering and then it tries to apply the inverted filter to your signal to actually remove it. So let's say you play some kind of guitar through a amp simulation or maybe through a real amp, right? And then you put this on and then this plugin tries to find out what the amp does to the signal and then it tries to apply the inverted transfer curve to the signal to remove everything that the amplifier does to your signal. I hope you, you know what I mean, okay? So here I have um, a piano recorded from YouTube. It sounds like this. Um, uh, maybe put this here on bypass for a moment. And you can hear it's recorded in some kind of room. Um, I have here also the video uh, from Cancel or chance um yeah it was recorded here through a phone inside of a room old piano not the best quality so a lot of things are happening in the process right from the piano going through this body um giving all the resonances from the room going through a microphone inside of a smartphone so there's a lot of filtering happening right so you can take then this plug in here and put it on and when you hit play, let's uh, remove bypass here in uh, enable learn. You can see here the signal and it tries to find out, you can see this here with the red line, it tries to find out the transfer curve. So this is the filter um, that was applied to the piano or to the um, sound of the piano, or at least that what the plugin think it does, it was applied. And it tries really to learn here what's happening. And this is not the match EQ. It doesn't take the full spectrum here, right? And then it tries to find out this curve and then it applies a different curve to this. It's not the match EQ. It really tries to learn only what's happening with the signal here and where are the resonances and what kind of resonances are added to the signal. And usually I use this plug in here for um, removing these resonances right i put this on the master on my tracks or maybe on an instrument and then i have this trans transfer curve here and then i turn up here this process knob and this process knob here it cues this out or it tries to apply the inverted filter curve to my signal to remove actually all this crap and it tries to make the sound linear Right. So this is the idea behind it. If I put this here to zero, nothing happens. So this is the original signal. And then you have here this knob, the waiting. And the more you turn this up, the more it uses the Fletcher-Munson curve. Um, for EQing, you can see a set frequency weighting higher values progress progressively uh, apply a Fletcher-Munson curve to the final output. So here you can also play around. So I use this plugin more or less all the time for filtering out resonances and it works really great for that on all kinds of um, sounds and tracks and masters and so on. Uh, but what I find out is that you can actually take this curve here and export it as an impulse response. So this is the main takeaway from this video. So you can hit save here and just save it as an impulse response. We can say here, uh, old piano, 
You have some options here for minimum phase and zero phase ordering and everything does something different here to the signal board. You can just leave this uh, disabled. You just call it old piano, right? And hit save. So now what we can do with this um, impulse response is that we can use, let's say, a clean piano sound. Piano take eight here, for instance. Um, and then let's see how this sounds. It's, it sounds very clean, right? And when you want to play with this piano to this piano, it yeah, it doesn't fit. It it's not gluing together. Everyone talks about gluing on the internet, right? And when they say gluing, they usually just mean um, put a compressor, a glue comp compressor on a on a drum bus. But that's not what gluing means, in my opinion. Gluing is also that you have the same frequencies, um, that you play the same melody or in the same frequency ranges and so on. It's not only that the dynamics behave in the same way. So gluing can mean a lot of things, in my opinion. So here, these two sounds sound, you know, not similar. Right, so it's a completely different sound. They don't match. So now we can take here the convolution reverb and can just put in this type of WAV file we exported. Um, I have to just search it here, old piano, there is it. Just drag it in. So this is the WAV file here we just exported uh, from the unfilter here. And then we can just take or apply the same resonances that was applied to the old piano to this piano. can fake um, this piano to sound like it was recorded in this room. And this is not only interesting for uh, piano sounds or for um, guitar sounds if you record something somewhere else, right? And there's a lot of filtering happening. You can apply the same filters to your internal sounds and then they don't sound that clean anymore or they sound they were, they were recorded in the same room. But you can also imagine this is pretty handy for, let's say you download some uh, samples from dinner, it's some snare sounds, right? And then the snare sound in a different way, in a certain way. And then you have a kick, clean kick, kick drum. And then you can use this um, impulse response and make the kick drum sound like it was recorded in the same room than the snare sound. So something like this, right? Where you want to apply the same filtering to a sound. So first you need unfilter to actually learn what was done to the signal in terms of filtering. And then you export this here as an impulse response and then you can, can apply the same process to a different sound to glue them together in a certain way. So this is very interesting for me also here. Um, let's say if you want to make um, piano simulations, right? It's all about these harmonics. It's all about these uh, formants that um, or static frequencies that are applied when you record a piano to make a piano sound realistic. Um, so this is very handy and sometimes interesting. So this unfilter plugin is not only interesting to remove resonances or to finalize mixes or to straighten out um, frequency responses of masters or mixes. You can also just learn what's happening uh, inside of a signal in terms of resonances or filtering, and then use that and export it as an impulse response and apply it to a different signal. So it's very cool and I have to um, experiment with that uh, in the future, of course, but I just found this out and I want to make a video on it. So if you own Unfilter, try this out, very handy. If you don't uh, own Unfilter, then maybe put it on your, um, I have to buy this in the future list or whatever and then uh, get it in a sale. Uh, but I think it's very handy sometimes to use this, right? So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you like the video. If you don't like the video, then don't leave a like, um, do whatever, or just block me. I don't know, whatever. Subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Bye.